If you write nonfiction, blogging your book can be a great way to build an audience while you're writing and test out your ideas. So today I want to talk about how to effectively blog your nonfiction book. However, I do want you to know that blogs and books are two different writing beasts. You need to understand the purpose and structure of each so you can easily transition between the two. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with blogs versus books. What's the difference? Blogs and books are different types of writing because they have different structures, purposes, and audiences. A blog is one place you can share your knowledge and experience with others. If you're writing a memoir, a blog is kind of like a public journal. If you're writing nonfiction that's designed to teach, then your blog is kind of like a public teaching guide. Either way, you are presenting your knowledge and experience in an episodic way. That means you should be posting on a schedule, and it means that each blog post should be complete in some way. It should deliver a complete short story that's based on your experience, or a complete tip, or a complete process. These tips should be short and easy to skim. A blog post is most likely shorter than a book chapter, so you're not going super in-depth on these topics when you're writing a blog. Remember that blog readers are looking for a quick answer to their questions. They're not looking to really study the subject matter through your blog. They go to books for that. The tone and structure of a blog should be casual and conversational. This isn't a place for you to try out your literary skills. People want a straightforward, easy to follow post. A nonfiction book also shares your knowledge and experience, but it promises a bit more too. If you're writing memoir, then in a book, you're promising a lesson that you're going to teach your reader something through your experiences. So by the time they get to the end, they get a character arc, a story arc, a theme arc, all of the good bits and pieces of a story. If you're writing nonfiction that teaches, then a reader should, by the end of your book, have reached their burning desire or overcome a pain point. That means your book is teaching them how to reach some end goal that they have in their life. Now, they might not be able to implement all of those changes right away from a book like they can from a blog post, but they should still have the tools they need to get there. After reading your book, a reader should have a more in-depth understanding of the subject matter and be able to apply it. Now, book chapters are longer than blog posts, so it's not like you can take one blog post and it's immediately a book chapter. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Also, books have a more formal tone. You're expected to work a little bit harder at the actual writing part, to be clear, to write in an interesting way, and to communicate effectively. So, in short, a blog is casual and conversational. A book is formal and more structured. Blog posts are shorter than book chapters, and books deliver a more in-depth perspective. So those are some of the differences between blogs and books. Next, I want to cover how to approach blogging your book. If you're blogging as a way to finish your nonfiction book, keep that goal in mind. That means that you should sit down and think about the topics or experiences you might want to cover in your book and list them. These don't need to be in any particular order. Then pick one and tackle it in a blog post. It might take more than one post depending on the topic or experience. Then, do the same thing again. So you can get through your book in these bite-sized chunks as long as you are focusing on your book's subject matter in your blog. It's a great way to get your ideas down on paper. Now, a successful blog is a consistent blog. 
And you want to be blogging consistently not just for that, but also because you'll get your book done faster if you do. If you're blogging to write a book, I highly recommend releasing a post a week. Anything less than that and your blog isn't really helping you get your book written. So strive for weekly. It might not be possible every week, but that's a good goal. This should be easier if you do list out those ideas for your book. So each week you're not trying to come up with a new topic. You already have a list to pick from. So you just need to choose the next one on the list or the one that's inspiring you that day. And again, you don't need to blog these in the order that they might appear in your book. A blog is less formal than that. Then you want to share your blog wherever you can. That means on your social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and especially Pinterest. Pinterest is more like a search engine than a social media, and it's a great way to get blog exposure. Also, share it with your friends and family. Get the word out. Use your blog to drive traffic to your website and especially to build your email list. You should have a place for someone to sign up for your email list on every blog post. That way, when it's time to release your book, you can let those people know that, hey, you now have a book based on your blog that's gonna go more in depth into the topics you've covered there. So people who are interested in your blog are likely going to become readers of your book. Really, your blog should be designed to get your book written and to get people on your email list. Those are the top two goals. Now I want to share how your blog is your book's outline. One of the best things about a blog is it forces you to get your ideas down on paper, but your blog is not necessarily a literal rough draft of your book. Some of those posts won't make it into the book. Other things you'll have to add later. Also, a blog is designed to be short and easily digestible in bite-sized pieces. A book should explore those concepts and ideas more in depth, so it's going to take more space for each of those ideas. Plus, if a fan of your blog buys your book, they should feel like they're getting more from your book than they do from your blog, because they actually paid for your book. So that's another reason why you really want to go more in depth in your book than on your blog. After you've explored most of your book ideas in your blog, you need to take a hard look at those posts. Decide which ones are still a good fit for your book and which ones you might save for something else. You might have to write new things to put in your book as well. And then take a look at which posts might naturally flow into each other so you can get an idea of the structure. You might combine multiple posts into a single chapter. You might expand on one post and double it to make its own chapter. Those are the types of things that you're looking for and taking notes on, so you know how much revision and writing you still have left to do. If you're writing memoir-style nonfiction, look at themes and the lessons that are present in multiple of the stories you have blogged about. Those are the blog posts that you want to keep and put together because they will create a natural story arc. When you're writing a memoir or something like it, you're writing a story. So a reader is going to expect things like a plot, which means things happen that are related to each other. They're going to expect character growth and development, which means they want to see what you've learned from those experiences. And they're gonna expect you to be vulnerable and personal. So you're not only sharing your story, you're also helping others on their journey, even if that help is as simple as letting them know they are not alone. Now, if you're writing more of a teaching style nonfiction, you want to zero in on what the purpose of your book is. What is that big thing you're promising a reader when they get to the end? What pain point are you helping them overcome? What hardship are you going to help them overcome? What burning desire are you going to help them reach? What goal in their life will your book help them accomplish? Choose blog articles that will help your readers accomplish that goal. Again, not all of your blog posts will make it into the book, and that's okay. A book is a finite experience. A blog is a little bit more infinite. You have the space for tangents in a blog that you don't have in a book. Plus, 
you might end up getting more than one book out of your blog if you allow yourself to go on some of those tangents. Now, when it comes time to picking posts and organizing them, I like to use note cards or print out the titles of my blog posts, cut them up, and move them around on a table or the floor so I can physically rearrange them. I'm more visual, that works for me. You might not need to do that. Maybe you just make a list on a sheet of paper, or maybe you're one of those people who can keep it all in your head. But for me, the note card thing, the physical note cards, really works well. When I do that, I will also write notes on those note cards or pieces of paper. I might write something like, need to expand here, or I might give a note card its own title that's not one of my blog posts because it's a topic I know I want to cover in my book but didn't fit in my blog. So I'll write that down too. And then I'll ditch some of the note cards or titles that aren't going to make it. Even if you love what you wrote in a blog post, remember you are still probably going to have to rewrite it to a point. Because your book is going to have that more formal language and structure, you don't want to pull some blog posts directly from your website and then rewrite others. You're gonna have to massage them all in so that they sound like they go together and all have that same formal tone. Now, some chunks you might not need to rewrite, but some you will just need to elevate the language on a little bit. So in that way, a blog is a little bit more like a really detailed outline than a complete first draft of your book. Next, I want to share why an editor recommends blogging your nonfiction book. Sometimes getting your book written is the hardest part. Finding that time can be really difficult, especially if you're writing a book to help you with your business, then you're still running your business while you're trying to write your book. Or if you're a stay-at-home parent, you're trying to write your book while also being chauffeur, maid, daycare, all of the pieces that come with being a stay-at-home parent. So a weekly blog can help you get your book written because it will break it up into bite-sized pieces and it'll make sure that you're committed to at least a thousand or two thousand words a week. You won't feel pressure to get more than that, but you'll feel excited when you do. So a blog can help you get your book written when you're busy. At the same time, you're building an audience for your book. This is a big deal. This is something not a lot of writers do before they publish, especially before they self-publish, and it's huge when you actually have an audience to announce your book to. That's why you might see books on Amazon that have reviews before they're published. Those are people who were beta readers or got advanced reader copies because they followed that person's blog or in some other way were on their email list. You'll also see larger first month sales numbers if you have a list ahead of time, which can really help your book in rankings and in getting into promotions. I know that probably sounds far away when you might not have written your book yet, but trust me, you will thank yourself for having started your email list before you published. It will make your life so much easier. And a blog can do that while at the same time helping you actually write your book. Also, pay attention to which posts a lot of people comment on and which ones rank highly in search engines. Those are posts that people are looking for answers to. Those are posts that people want a more in-depth explanation of. So those will give you a good idea of what direction you might wanna take your book. So if you've decided to blog your book, great. It will help you get your book written and it will help you build your audience. Just remember, blogs and books are two different forms of writing, so you are going to have to do some revision and rewriting. So what are you planning on blogging about for your nonfiction book? Share your idea in the comments below. I blog about different aspects of creative writing, and I am in the process of taking some of those posts and turning them into a nonfiction book. So I'm right there with you. For more videos on blogging, marketing, and other aspects of writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a list of 13 writing craft books 
that have been vetted by an editor. These are books that helped me in my writing journey. And now it's your turn to start your nonfiction blog, to get your book written, and to build your readership, to ignite your ink.